Yes, Father. You died and came back to life for us, Lord. Hallelujah. You are risen, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are risen. Yes. We're delivered and redeemed. Yes, Lord. Forever we praise your name. Death, where is your sting? Woo! Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Yes, he's risen. He's alive. Yes. Yes, what a worship this morning, fulfilling for a Sunday like this, where we celebrate the Resurrection Sunday, the resurrection of our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, it's a great day to be alive. It's a great day to be a Christian. We thank God for everything He's done for us. Uh, welcome to Free Word Church. Uh, just a word, no gimmicks, no jokes. And Christ is king here, and he's alive here as well. And so this morning, as I welcome you to uh, this sanctuary, this great Sunday, I would want to start off the day by calling upon our Lord, the risen Father, uh, to take care of the service. Every word that will come out of this service will come directly from him. So before we jump in, I want to invite my Father here. Lord, we ask you today to take your place of power and preeminence because we recognize the fact that you rose again and that you live, and that all powers are given to you, Lord, the powers in heaven and on the earth, a power that defeated death, sin, and the grave, that you are almighty and your will alone can only be done in this church and in our lives. Lord, come and order our steps today and direct our path as we go into your word, as we preach the gospel that we're born for, that it'll bring power to those who hear it, those who listen to it, and your name will be glorified and your name will be edified at the end of the day. Bless yourself with yourself and let your power be made available to those who believe. Because when we believe, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Have your way today, Father. Have your way in every aisle and every row. Show up mightily and show out mightily. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Again, welcome to Free Word Church. Um, the title of my message today is His Risen. Of course, we know his risen, and today we celebrate his resurrection. Uh, the main scripture for this message today will be taken from Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse 6, and it reads, He's not here, for he's risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Right, let me give you a context for the scripture we've just heard now. We know who our Lord is. And we remember that as we celebrate this uh, resurrection, we also celebrated the Holy Week that led to the resurrection of Christ. And so that's why I want to give you a little context here. On Palm Sunday... The Bible records that Jesus entered Jerusalem triumphantly as a king. We understand why it's Palm Sunday. They waved palm leaves as he entered the city, shouting Hosanna. On Monday, he challenged the power of the day, the Roman and Jewish power. On Tuesday, the Bible records that he invited others to his rebellion. On Holy Wednesday, 
he was anointed just like his forefather, King David. On Thursday, as a monarch, he declared his covenant with God. And we know on Good Friday, he was crucified. The Bible records that Jesus was executed as a threat to the Roman and Jewish power and authority. He was beaten, tortured, beaten to a pulp and beaten beyond recognition. They forced a crown of thorn in his head. Holes in his body, he bled water and blood. He took the beating. He took all the torture for you and I. He was stretched wide apart on the cross, nailed to the rugged cross of Calvary for a sin he did not commit, for no wrongdoing, for who he was just, who was made wrong on our behalf. He took the beating, he was mocked, he was derided, and he was forsaken just for you and I. Forsaken so we may be accepted. He died so that we may live. He was rejected so that we will be received. He was dishonored so that we can be honored. He died for us. That was Good Friday. Christ said it was finished. He's done all the work that needed to be done and it was completely finished. Nothing was left undone. The Bible records that Jesus laid in the tomb for two full nights. It was a horrifying period. Jesus' family, his disciples and followers were distraught and wept. You know, at that time, in a period of darkness and uncertainty, it did appear that the Roman and Jewish powers, the corrupt religion, and the powers of darkness have won. At least for a little moment, it appeared they have won. But the Bible says suddenly there was a huge earthquake. Yes, a huge earthquake. And an angel of God, who was clad in a white robe, rolled back the stone that was covering Jesus' tomb. And the Bible says he scared the guards away. According to the gospel in Matthew chapter 28, verse 2 and 3. If you remember, the powers that be asked him to put a big stone over the tomb. Not only was it a big stone, they sealed it all around with the notion that they don't want Christ to get out. And they thought his disciples would come in the middle of the night to steal his body. But when the angel appeared, the guards could not stop. In Mark, we see in chapter 16, verse 1 to 2, that Mary Magdalene and the other mother, the mother of James and Salome, came to the tomb to anoint Jesus. But as they got closer and closer, they noticed that the tomb has been opened according to the scriptures in Mark chapter 16, verse 4. It was already open. Christ was not there. Christ had risen. Christ defeated death, the grave, and the sin. And so the angel was in the tomb, and he said to these women, Be not afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. Behold the place where they laid him, according to Mark, chapter 16, verse 6. I'm giving you this context so you can see what transpired. In verse 9 of the same scripture, the angel of the Lord instructs them to leave the cemetery and tell Jesus' his disciples what they had seen. Jesus is alive. 
All powers is given to him in heaven and on earth. All powers to do all things, to rule and reign and to be in charge, to be in control, to do all things and to have the final say. He was no longer in the tomb. And as he rose, we arose with him. He got up. Now, this is powerful. This is the highlight of what we do in our celebration today. While I believe that Good Friday was the high mark, the high point of our Christianity, where Christ did it all. He performed all the work. There's nothing left for you and I to do. Christ said it was finished. A finished is finished, 100% finished. Although that was the high point for me, but the resurrection seals the deal for me. Not only does it show that Christ did the work for us, that we're free now, we're no longer held down by any bondage or the things of the past, but Christ has shown the world that he is who he said he is, that he got up and he's no longer in the grave. But now the Bible says he ascends unto heaven where he sits on the right hand side of his father, ruling and reigning with his father and controlling our thoughts and interceding for us and being there for us forever. That we have victory because he rose again. Now, for us to really understand the power of resurrection, and by resurrection I mean the good news, the power of the good news, the power of restoration, the power of renewal of hope and authority, the power of a rebirth and a new life to all things that were dead. That's resurrection. But in order to fully enjoy the power that resurrection gives to us, we need to come in terms or to terms with the death and burial of Jesus Christ. Because I understand like you do, there is no resurrection without death. In that death, it was a very dark period. We all have read the accounts of the death of Jesus Christ. It was a period of anguish. It was a period of sorrow, uncertainty. And for a lot of people, it was a period of doubt and confusion. You see, Christ was very powerful when he walked the earth. We all know that. He had power to heal all manners of disease. The Bible records that he healed a woman with the issue of blood. He had power to bring people from back from the dead. He brought Lazarus back from the dead. He had power to heal people who were blind and brought sight to their eyes. Even the winds and waves obey him, the Bible says. He had power to defeat anything and had power to curse things. The Bible said he cursed the fig tree and it produced no fruit anymore. But there he lay, dead, and couldn't save himself. It was a dark period. Now keep in mind, Good Friday was not celebrated like we do today. In real time, it wasn't a day of celebration. It wasn't a day of gratitude. It wasn't a day of joy. It was a dark day. It was a bad day. A day that Jesus Christ, who said he was the Messiah, was crucified on a rugged cross of Calvary and he couldn't save himself. And people began to wonder, was he really the Messiah? Was he who, really, who he really said he was? If he could save others and do all the mighty miracles that we all witnessed and he couldn't save himself from death. He couldn't do anything to resist this then we wonder whether he was indeed the Messiah. People had these thoughts in their minds and, and it became more troublesome when he was up on the cross, helpless and gave up the ghost. It was a dark period, a period of anguish, a period of pain. But we know that death is the one that comes first. If Christ had to save us, he had to die. Die for our sins, die for our mistakes, dies for all the things that we've done wrong. 
And in the death of Christ, we see ourselves in the picture. And so no matter what you go through today, I don't know what's dead in your life. I don't know the kind of death you are after right now or is after you. What I'm going to tell you is because we're dead in Christ, we're hid in him. Our victory comes from his victory. Our life comes from his re resurrection. Whatever dead situation in your life today will come back to life. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how bad it is right now with what you're dealing with that seems hopeless. You don't know if you're going to get out of it. You don't know if your child is going to be healed again. You don't know if your marriage will be, will be, will be really renewed again and brought back to life the way it was before. You don't know if you'll get that job. You don't even know whether you're going to lose your house because now you're tithering at the brinks of losing your home. You may be sick yourself and not sure how many more days you got. Now, no matter how much the pain is, no matter how big the enemy makes it to be, I encourage you today to know that God is still alive. And that that situation is not bigger than the situation he faced on the cross of Calvary. And that at the end of the tunnel, there's going to be light. In due season, Christ will show himself through. Now, keep in mind, as a man of God, I've seen a lot of times when he feels like he's not answering our prayers. But God all the time answers prayers. He may not answer the prayer the way you're, you're uh, expecting it to be answered, but he does answer prayers. And sometimes he may not deliver us from anguish, but he can deliver us through anguish. And so be of good cheer, for the Bible tells us that Christ has already overcome the world. We have to come to terms with the death that faces all of us. No matter how many zeros you have at the end of your salary, you have your own nails, you have your own cross to carry. No matter how old you are or how young you are, you've got your own cross. No matter how fat or slim or big or small, rich or poor, famous, popular, it doesn't matter who you are, you have your own cross designed specifically for you, tailor-made for you. And you've got to get your nerve up and carry your cross knowing that God is with you. And knowing that at the end of the day, you already have victory. The work he did on the cross of Calvary grants you and I victory that no situation can take away from us. Nothing can separate us from that love that we have in Christ Jesus. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. In order for us to also bask in the joy of a resurrection we celebrate today, we have to understand the power of the burial, the burial of Jesus Christ. Remember, after the burial, there was quietness everywhere. It was the Sabbath the next day. Nobody went to work. Nobody did anything. People were basically relaxing. But those who loved Christ, those who were his followers and disciples and his family, for them, it was a period of loneliness and a sense of abandonment where many felt that God is either absent or far away from their situation. Nobody celebrated the burial in real time. For those two nights that Christ laid in the tomb, it was a bad period. Nobody was sure he was going to get up. He hadn't gotten up yet. And so it was a gloomy period. And again, just like the burial period, those two full nights that was full of uncertainty and pain, you may have periods in your life where you feel that you're lonely. A quiet period for you, when you get a sense of abandonment, that you've been ostracized from the mainstream, that people have abandoned you, mocked you, derided you, and ridiculed you. That those that you serve have cast you out 
in your moment of disaster, in your moment of pain. Those that you've helped will not come to your help. You feel like you're all on your own without help. You don't know how long this day will be, the day of quietness, the day of uncertainty. But you are wondering if God can come through for you. I want to encourage you today with authority given to me as the Son of the Most High God, that God is all the time with you. And no matter how lonely it gets, God is with you. No matter how difficult it gets, God is with you. No matter the level of uh, trial and tribulation that you face, remember that God is with you. And no one can stop what God has prepared for you. There is no resurrection without death. And after death, there is barrier. We already have victory as the children of the Most High God. And we understand that God has done all the work for us. What I'm here today to tell you is no matter where you are, people may be against you. Or people may be after your life, jealous of who you are, trying to kill you. Saying all kinds of things to make you lose your composure. But resist the temptation. Don't allow the enemy to set the thermostat for you. You control the thermometer of your life. You control everything about you. You are the one who decides whether you're going to have a good life or not. Not what your siblings are saying, your parents are saying, or your comrades. Not what your colleagues are saying, it's what the Lord has said about you. If the Lord blesses you, no one can curse you, for sure. If he opens a door for you, no one can shut that door. If he has risen and kept you alive with him, no one can put you in a place of death and bondage again. It's over. It is finished, like he said on the Good Friday. Today, what I encourage you to do is believe. Believe. That's simply what it requires. No matter how it appears, remember how it looked like the, the Roman Empire won the fight after two full nights in the tomb. Remember sometimes it feels like your life is over, but I want to tell you it's not over until God says it's over. Hang tight with God. Trust Him with everything you got. Believe Him. The power of the belief we have is all we got. And we don't only believe, we do more than believe. But we have to start with believing. Remember the thief on the cross of Calvary. All he did was believe Jesus Christ, even though it was at the eleventh hour. But he believed. And the Bible says he was with Jesus Christ in paradise the same day. The thief was not a tight payer. He didn't work in church. He didn't say long prayers or loud prayers. He wasn't a bishop or a pastor or an elder of the church. He wasn't a pastor's kid. He didn't know anything about the Bible, but all he had to do was to believe. And the Bible says Jesus forgave him and he had a place in paradise with Jesus Christ the same day. And this is exactly what we were, say, we were told in John 3, 16. You know, in Free World Church, we don't care about anybody's money. We don't care about the worldly gifts you can give to us. The gift we love is the gift of your soul, the gift of your spirit, that you can give your life to God and, and believe him for who he said he is. That's what we care about, a free word. You see, there's no amount of money you can give me that can surpass what God has already given me. It's not possible. The blessing that I, that I get from the, the Lord I serve is way greater than all the money in the world. You know, the world will ask you what's in it for me before they do something. It's got to be selfish. It's got to be on your own terms. But for me, Christ is what's in it for me. Christ is in it for me. If I have him and I'm in good standing with him, I have the whole world. And you don't have to pursue money. You don't have to pursue the good things of this world. Just pursue him. And he will overwhelm you with the gift of the world. He will overwhelm you with the things you haven't even asked for. And he will be there with you. So don't just believe. Believe and share your belief with the world. And that's why we got the great commission from Jesus Christ. Remember when he got up 
he spoke to his disciples. He spoke to them. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. In verse 19, Jesus was saying to his disciples, Go ye therefore and teach the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In verse 20, he says, Teaching them all things that you have observed, whatsoever that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the earth and the world. He's with us. He's with us. He's with you and I. And all we got to do is not just celebrate Resurrection Sunday, but believe in our spirit that he is who he said he is. And that he'll do exactly what he said he'd do. And that he's still on the throne, very much in control. He's got the power to do all things, including the things that bother you in your life. And he's got the final say. That means it's not over until God says it's over. Go and share God's word and see how blessed you're going to be. Even if the whole world would not believe Jesus Christ, I believe him. I, know, I don't need any more signs or any wonders or any or miracles. Everything he's done for me is enough. Just waking up this morning and glorifying his name is a big enough miracle for me. I've made up my mind. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord and we will believe him. No matter what the enemy says or does or thinks. We encourage you to be part of Free Word Church. In any way you can, subscribe to the ministry. We have aspirational and inspirational word that will change your life. That will give you the power you need to throw yourself into the arm of the Almighty God. And trust Him and serve after Him. Subscribe to the ministry. We're doing great work here. And, and find a space to fit in to what we're doing to help the world. Thank you for being here. And I know God is with you, the service, and all that you've come here with in terms of your desires and your hopes and goals and aspirations. I guarantee you that as you trust God and believe in who he is, he will open doors of opportunity for you that no man can close. Yeah, because you are redeemed and justified. You're chosen, empowered, to do great things in the world. Just trust him, believe him from today and go all the way with Jesus. If you're here and you don't quite know Jesus and you're wondering whether you can take part of this, be part of this, I encourage you to go after me in this prayer of salvation. Almighty God, I believe who you said you are. And because you've risen, I rise with you. I will serve you for the rest of my life. I believe you and I'll do your will. Control my life, order my steps, and direct my path, and show up in my life every day. If you say this prayer with me, you are now a born-again Christian. Attach yourself to a church that shares the Word of God, and watch how your life will turn around. Again, thank you so much for showing up. Until next Sunday, trust Him. Share His Word. Believe Him. Share the good news to all corners of the earth. And let it be known that Christ is still on the throne, very much in control, has the power to do all things, and has the final say. May God bless you. May his light shine upon you. May his peace rest upon you for the rest of your life. And may the joy of the salvation we have be in you forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Go and make it a great week. And God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. And amen. Woo! The Lord is really good.